Okay. So, first question, uh, you have a company experience. Let's say you flew to the former Yugoslavia. How was that, uh, how was that uh, expression for the former pilot to take part the first time in preparation for combat, to have the knowledge that you could be shut down or taken or something like that? How is that to act on the combat? First, uh, thank you for having me here and taking the time to talk. Combat experience. I'm certain every pilot who has ever climbed up a ladder in the cockpit is a profound, life changing experience. It validates a lifetime of training and exercises to prove to yourself that you are good, good enough or not. Whether you survive or not is entirely dependent on all those years of training. I was not just a combat pilot, I was a, the commander of you the were entire the, the, the fighting. Canadian. Essentially, every fighter pilot in Canada flew for me during the operation, operation of the Allied Force. And you are responsible for the lives of every single one of them. It's a profound, life-changing experience. It was for was it something you have learned? You have 25. I flew 25 missions for Kosovo and Serbia, uh, which was a significant amount in that period of combat. How does it change you? Yes, how does it change you? And how, how, what was the, the, the lesson? So, I flew a Canadian in a Canadian contingent, a Canadian force that essentially had zero combat experience before then. And I think uh, the last uh, international chance for the was the was the World War II. The last formal one was really World War II. There was experience in Korea, there was experience in Gulf War One. I. I was the really the first commander to lead in combat since World War II. It is life changing. Historical command. What was, it's fascinating to see how your pilots and ground crew adapt. My ground crew technicians were flawless, they were stunning to work under that pressure day in, night, just as active as day, and the pilots to see how they adapted. You ask what the lesson is. The lesson is that you fight like you train. You say that in peace. Training, training is absolutely essential. Your training means everything. You will not learn how to be a combat pilot when you are actually in combat. If you were not good enough before, you will never survive. When we talk about the future of combat, I'm lucky enough to fly the F-35. We know that our engagements in the future will not be low threat engagements like our recent experience is. In the high threat environment that we actually face, the only way you can survive is if you train with the same focus and intensity that you expect to experience in combat. That's my lesson. The next part of your life was engagement with just flying of uh, European objects, Phantoms uh, and Eurofighters, Phantoms. Uh, how was it to change or to turn your body, your handling capabilities from the cockpit of the Hornet to the, let's say, le new generation, uh, new generation Europe? This is, this is important. Sure, in 1999 I was fortunate enough to be hired to work outside of Munich in Germany for what we call the ABS now. I was one of the early test pilots on the Typhoon. Typhoon for four years. I also flew a tornado. 200 or so. Typhoon was not very stable in those years. It was a very uh, finicky, not very robust airplane. Typhoon has been changing over time. I also flew F 4s to tornadoes. Typhoon was a great aircraft to fly. It was all up for the pilot. Lots of power. It went really fast. Its systems were sophisticated like the F-18, but nothing like a fifth generation fighter as I find now. Having said all that, 
but uh, Typhoon was interesting. Instead, it promised great things 15 years ago, 17 years ago, when we first fly. Fluid, it's a very mature uh, But a uh, fifth generation. Was that big here, let's say, of the Typhoon to change the economy of that to the Typhoon? Was a big jump to the generation? Typhoon has never really become a true multi role fighter. That the Polish Air Force flies the F 16, or that I flew in the F 18. Those are true multi role swing role airplanes. Typhoon was always a predominant air to air airplane, and it still is much the same with the airplane. And F 16 is multi role. So you were later turned the cockpit into F 16. I did. I flew uh, on exchange as a military pilot at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Las Vegas with Chuck Yeager. Of uh, course. Flew. He's a legend. And uh, this is a legend. He's a, he is a legend. So he is today. Uh, changed the world. And his pilots are Edwards Air Force Base. And he's a legend. 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 He's I love the F-16. I have made 2,000 hours of my time on the F-16, every model, and it is the quintessential, the legendary fourth generation fighter, even today. Is that so that you also test the... Tested Polish I did. I flown called the Polish F 16s out of Fort Worth, Texas. I have flown. I have flown Polish airplanes. I've been checking my lug a couple of times, but often enough, it is a rocket ship. Nothing is more visceral, more exciting for a fighter pilot to get into a brand new F 16 that smells like your new car at the BMW showroom or a Mercedes showroom. Get into a brand new F-16 and you realize what a phenomenal airplane it is. Holy cow! It is so fast, and so agile, and I know all the capabilities it has, that it has. Even today, it's, it's the then, quintessential fourth generation fighter. Then we have to jump into the concept of the next generation fighter. I think about the lightning to F-35 lightning. Mother and 
father out there who are terrified that their children spend too much time playing video games or texting with their thumbs on their iPhones is that this is an airplane powered by 8.6 million lines of software code that has so much astonishing information. The situation awareness is so profoundly better than anything before that those children that we're worried about that don't study hard enough in school and spend too much in video games will adapt quickly to the F-35 because that's what we expect them to do. There's a future for our children. It really is a game changer, not just air to air and air to ground like we traditionally expected F-16s, F-18s type things to do. Intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, seeing everything, gathering so much data to bring it back to commanders in the air and on the ground to protect our fourth generation fighters as we go in and out of combat. The last bit of the F-35 is everywhere. Yes, that's not true. I see everything. Uh, 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 the is around on the ground, over the sea, and we're nowhere. nowhere. It's a stealth airplane. No one ever knows you're coming. You have no sense when you are there. You have complete dominance when you fly. It was the F-22. It was not the F-35. Complete dominance when you fly. So, everywhere. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I wish you the most pleasure of this next day's talk. Thanks. It's so clear.